Hello everybody, welcome to the first episode of my new show, Life Lens. Today, we're going to talk about marriage, love and all the good stuff. I've filmed lots of weddings, so I've been thinking lately, what actually is the definition of marriage? What is the meaning of marriage? What makes it last? So, I decided to talk to a few people and do some research about it. And today, we are very lucky to have Mr. Janison, who is a very seasoned lawyer, he is a friend and mentor as well. I know he's been married for many years. I'm going to find out from him what is the meaning of marriage to him. So let's get into it. Welcome to Life Lens. Capturing moments, sharing stories. I've been married for 40 years and marriage is a terrible responsibility. Every decision you make is no longer your decision. It's the decision of two people together. And if you have children, it is a decision. Let's see your three children. So it will affect five people. The moment the wife brings forth the first child, on that day the wife and the husband lose their independence. They no longer live for themselves but for the children. Everything that they do will be for the child. In fact, you can see this in the way they behave. When they go to a function or to their mother's house or somewhere, their own barang will be only on small plastic bag. For the child, there'll be five bags. One for milk, one for warm water, one for changing diapers and all that. So what happens is, the moment you get into a marriage, you have to share responsibility for everything. So the question is, are you prepared to do it or not? But what if you enter into a non-marriage relationship? Because this is so terrible. What if you enter into a non-marriage relationship? Do you think it's going to be easy? No. Because the proper marriage is, the, is an institution. Like I told you earlier, it's a terrible responsibility, but it also brings you great joy. Imagine a child being born and you're holding it in the hand. And suddenly there is a connection between the child and the grandmother and the grandfather. Grandfather and grandmother will come regularly to see the child. They may not even look at your face. They will be with the child. And what will happen is a child brings two sides of the family together. So the purpose of marriage is to bring about unity. This is the physical aspect of it. The social as aspect of it is, it creates a family unit, where it creates a, a family unit of many people, and they will all work for each other's interest. And as long as the child is below the age of 18, the father and mother will spend their entire energy looking after the well-being of the child, and everything that the child wants, they will give. But once the child reaches the age of 8, 9, 10. Unless you teach the child responsibility, the child thinks it is the center of the universe. No. I look at this, I want this, you buy for me. My friend has got this, you buy for me. So you keep satisfying this child and until the time it becomes an adult, everything that it asks, somebody has given it. And then when it becomes an adult, it realizes, the child realizes, a he or a she, you can't have everything you want. No happens. So you as a father and mother have to train the child to obey spiritual laws, to obey legal laws, to obey certain social laws, you have to behave in a certain way and the accumulated wisdom of the grandfather, mother, father will be taught to the child. So we now have children who just want to be on the handphone 24 hours a day like that. What they don't realize, it's been found in America, that some of the American football players when they are running, they cannot pass the ball because they've lost peripheral vision. They've lost peripheral vision is because the vision is focused on a piece of metal that's two and a half inches long by four inches long. So now they have to train the American football players to have physical peripheral vision, which they naturally had. So can you imagine if you're playing rugby or you're playing American football, you're scrumming and your head is down and you've lost your peripheral vision. How are you going to pass the ball? A great many things associated with family life, discipline, organization, responsibility, division of labor, moral responsibility to your wife, supervisory responsibility over the education of your children, teaching your children, learning to cook, learning to wash clothes. Okay, your name is Gregory, right? You want to go and be a good husband. Okay. Now, huh, you go and tell your boss and boss, can I be general manager? I think I should be promoted, you know. But here you are cheating on your wife doing something else. You think if you are cheating on your wife, huh, you can look after a company belonging to somebody else. Huh? You'll be cheating the owner, isn't it? So the family values that you have in your house huh, will be the family values that you bring to work. 
It has been found in America that the CEOs who best perform for the best outstanding CEOs of America are those who have very strong families, very loyal to their wives. They go to church or to religious institution, Buddhist temple or whatever, religiously. They have very strong values. The children have discipline. They don't give them handphones. You want to get married? Oh, you want to have the benefit of sex. In, in law, we have what is called benefit burden. If you want the benefit of something, you must also share the burden. You cannot have benefit without burden. These two things will always come together. In law, they will teach you two more things, obligation and liability. So you have certain obligations towards the society. You see an elderly lady crossing the street, she's not related to you, you just let her go, is it? No, you run forward, you help her cross the street. In the same way, you will also protect society as an adult. You will also protect your company from falling into damages. Although you are not the owner of the company, you are only an employee. As far as marriage is concerned, it's a whole load of responsibility. And you will have problems with your wife. You will have problems with your children. You will have problems with your in-laws. You will have problems with your relatives. You have to learn to live with them. You have to learn to resolve disputes. You have to learn to talk softly. You have to learn to live together despite your differences. You have to live and let live. This is what marriage brings to the table. That is the benefit and burden of marriage. And I don't think I should say anything further. Thank you.